figure out a tool that could give you information right after the earthquake to give you a big kind of quick and dirty big idea about where the damage was. Try to just go in the right direction. Okay. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Uh, my talk is introduce a recent uh, federal project product called Two Pager. It provides timely information on the impact of any major earthquake. Any major earthquake, we're all focused on Cascadia, but any. And how much, how many, and most important is the where. And that's uh, tease you with a graphic here. This is an example from that where the uh, Dark blues are areas with more impact. You can tell which one, and the lighter ones are less impact. Okay, because damage will not be equal across the area because of variations in the earthquake ground motion and also, of course, in the uh, building stock we have here. Two pager, the combines the uh, expertise from the two federal agencies, the USGS Shake Map Program. You have seen those products, I'm sure, in many uh, news releases. And also from the FEMA Natural Hazards Risk Assessment Program, their HAZES tool, which standardizes how we measure loss from natural hazards, such as earthquakes and flooding. Both these programs have been around for at least two decades. And it's important to point out this is a free. This is a free to any anyone, and it has no restrictions. The data are, are uh, fully open. There's a few moving parts here. I won't go into great details on on the uh, the, ne well, the next one here. But okay. So after any major earthquake, timely estimates. We'll get into that time for these categories here. Now most people here today I think are on that third point, the building damage, for example, uh, red, yellow, uh, green tag estimates. Uh, but there are other, uh, it's important to point out, there are other uh, um, measurements that, that are, or estimates that are done there and that is available at the, at the uh, state and county and uh, census tract level. What is a census tract, you might ask? It's a subdivision of a county, and we'll show some examples later here. There's a few moving parts uh, to this. Again, combining the expertise of the two federal agencies to make this a little clearer here, the USGS is responsible for what is on the left here. FEMA in the middle, and you, should you want this information, are, are on the right here. There's a worldwide network of seismometers and other instruments that goes into um, USGS shape map uh, computers and near real time estimates of the magnitude of the earthquake and also the local ground shaking. And that's posted, like I say, within 15 minutes uh, there. Uh, there's also another uh, part of that called the USGS pager, and we'll go into that. That's a quick estimate that uh, the uh, shake map program does to uh, for uh, total fatalities and economic impacts. Should this earthquake be of a yellow, orange, or red alert, pager alert, the FEMA team will kick into action, use the best available information on the building stock, that being the recently released uh, uh, National Structure Inventory, and uh, within their time frame, it's about 10 hours posted on the web, but also uh, are posted in the cloud and, and then also send out a uh, broadcast uh, email. The pager, to give an idea of where this name comes from, pager actually is an acronym for Prompt Assessment to Global Emergency Response, something like that. Anyway, so this is USGS, they generate this single page concisely uh, piles in the, the information about the earthquake, but also uh, uh, the estimated fatalities and uh, economic losses. This is the MAG 7 8 and that earthquake in Turkey, the MAG 7 8 earthquake in Turkey. There were, of course, aftershocks here. 
and this was obviously a red in both the fatalities and the uh, economic impact. Now, Pager wasn't the two pager. FEMA didn't kick into action here because this is not in the United States. But this is an example of what the pager is. You can go on for any earthquake and get this information. Not really valuable at the local level that you can use it in a in a any any way. It does give you some, as you see down here in the selected city exposures, some estimates, but you really want something a little finer grain. And that's where the two pager comes in. And first of all, if you go in your packet, you will see this little colorful graphic. Uh, first thing here, the name. Um, yes, uh, it's two pager because the intent is this is stapled onto that pager. Okay, so that makes it a two pager. <laughs> Set aside the branding concerns here. This is, okay. As you can see, uh, and also, so, so some things to point out here, this is a scenario for the Cascadia uh, subduction zone. This is a scenario, we use it for planning purposes, but we don't use it after an actual earthquake, please, because earthquakes always surprise us. Ground motion will be different, but we do our best with the information we have at hand for planning purposes to see what could it look like. So as you see on here, there's red, yellow, um, green estimates, uh, economic losses, injuries, and fatalities, et cetera, here. It's all on, on, on this. And this is a, this is a uh, prototype, you might say. It may change in its format. Okay, so uh, the second page may take on some different characteristics as the FEMA team gets some additional feedback here. RDPO people note the top counties in this scenario, by the way. Okay, um, so I'm gonna walk through an example. This is a real earthquake that happened last December. Ferndale earthquake outside of Eureka, California, notorious hotspot. MAG 64, 2.34 a.m., note that timestamp. And you can go online, get more information on it. There it is, the warmer colors, the more shaking. And the pager that is attached to shake map said really the, the fatalities, likely green, they're, they're likely less you know, zero. But the economic losses were sufficient enough uh, in, the, in the 100 to a million to a billion that triggered uh, FEMA into uh, uh, running their two pager. And that is also on that same handout. This is the broadcast email to recipients who have signed up. First thing I want to point out is note the timestamp. So it was 2.34 a.m. This comes out at 1.09 p.m. This is actually Rocky Mountain Time, or Mountain Time. So that's within the 10 hours. That's the intent here of, the, uh, of this uh, two-pager uh, program here. The other thing to point out is there are some global summaries uh, Again, valuable for, say, regional planning, but doesn't give you that local information. That local information's down there at the bottom. It's too large to attach into an email, so it's easily accessible. Again, no password, no security restriction. You can forward this email to whomever you want. I will also point out, as we look at this GIS data, you don't need to be an expert user if you have uh, intermediate skills in GIS. You too can uh, work with this data. We're going to step back now to that scenario, again, the Cascadia, and actually show some results from a modeled Cascadia, okay? First is our red, yellow, green, and don't need inspection estimates. I want to point out in the blue are the census tracts. They are defined by the U.S. Census Bureau for enumeration. They don't necessarily match to city boundaries, nor to neighborhoods, however you define them. So, but they do follow major arterials. For those of you who know Portland, you'll recognize uh, the arterials or streams uh, that, that uh, are used to divide up the area here. Okay, so 
this uh, this isn't top showing the total number of buildings. It's showing proportionally within that census tract what the estimate of red, yellow, and green tag buildings are in that census tract. So for those of you familiar with Portland, let's see if I can get a zapper to work here. Yeah. Is this a surprise? No. Okay. So what's going on out here? These are typically single family residential wood frame buildings. And these are these are neighborhoods. So that's uh, that's the spatial variation you get because of primarily building inventory, but also variations in the ground uh, motion here. It's more than buildings. Here I'm showing the displaced population, displaced households. A household is like a single family residential, it's one household, a 10 unit apartment building is 10 households, about two to three people per household typically. So this is showing proportionally across the area uh, in that census tract, how many displaced households may, uh, how many households may be displaced. Doesn't mean how many need shelter, that's a different question, okay? Uh, because some people have resources or they may move out of the area, go live with friends for a while, but this could be helpful. I'm probably not the right audience for this one, but I'm just try trying to show you the, the uh, uh, different uh, types of data that come with the two-pager here. But John, you don't mean actually, uh, you mean are available in that GIS thing so that somebody can Yes. Like yeah. Yes. It, it doesn't sure. come in a chart like this. No. No. This. Uh, the, it is a shape file uh, divided up by census tracts with uh, a lot of uh, table fields. Um, we will provide the documentation to help with interpretation. But again, this is not that. Uh, it's not a sophisticated GIS data set. To emphasize. Uh, that uh, this is for any earthquake and not Cascadia. This is the RDPO five counties there. There are a number of named faults which geologists believe to be seismogenic. There's your word for the day. That uh, means they're not dormant. They are capable of rupturing. I picked on what is called the Lackamas Lake Fault. It's in eastern Clark County, shown there in the cyan on the uh, on the, on the left here, and this is a scenario modeled as a magnitude 6-7, and Camas would have a bad day, as you might expect. In fact, the damage for a local earthquake would be anticipated to be worse than, say, from a Cascadia at that local level. However, Hillsboro here would be relatively uh, uh, unscathed. What does that mean? What would you do with that information? Well, you know, back to that stranded worker, back to could you help out the, uh, could you help out here in Clark County and also Eastern uh, uh, Multnomah County? And if you're afraid about your email box getting full of any earthquake in the nation, but Ferndale was the last one. These damaging earthquakes are not that frequent, so no, your and email box is not going to get flooded if you sign up here. And it's only U.S. earthquakes. Yes, U.S. earthquakes only. Okay. So, some brief overview here. Uh, if you're interested, you want to be on the distribution. Uh, currently, we're gathering um, names of people who do want this information. Uh, talk with us, and afterward, and, and, and afterwards, uh, ideally, someday FEMA will put this onto a listserv, but it's not that way right now. So, we're, we're gathering up names. So, I hope that gave you a quick uh, taste of this uh, this tool here. Thank you. And, yes. Thank you, Alan. We're also going to do another webinar with, for, if you have GIS folks, for GIS training for people that could actually use it. You're going to have to take them in and show them. Oh, yeah. And one last point I didn't raise here. If anybody is involved in uh, coastal counties, this does not include tsunami um, damages. Okay, this is earthquake only. Just make that clear.